I'm passionate about history as a discipline. I think because I'm passionate about it, I try to challenge it. And I try to look at it as a, as a kind of a space where, you know, you can, you can mold things. You know, it was written by certain people. How do we intervene? How do we, you know, make sure that these histories that we are uncovering can re, be reinterpreted within the kind of historical canons. And I think it's an interesting place also for in integration, the integration of the other and an interesting space for relation. And I, I think speaking about these absences, these transparencies in history and, and rendering them violent because they were, you know, the fact that we are not able to speak in, from a first a place position is because you know a lot of black Africans were victimized through these you know these the modernist era so finding ways to incarnate certain parts of history using models such as you know looking at the larger history and the shorter personal histories and this is the exercise that I try to do in all my projects is to make sure that I'm heightening my subjectivity uh, I'm, 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 I'm integrated in the story and and my personal stories are integrated in how the project develops so it's making fragile, something that is already fragile. Working with these fragilities of life, you know, history is a fragile discipline and my personal history is a fragile discipline, how these two can relate to each other. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in molding this and, and, and constructing narratives around, you know, these two spaces, the macro and the micro. And, and maybe that's, this is how I, it's kind of methodology, artistic methodology that I'm working around. Looking at the story of the sheep, I was interested in how the, you know, the slaves-to-be uh, could gather their geographical position around, you know, sound cues. You know, I thought that was very, very important. Knowing that, for instance, if there were people on top of them walking, they would feel the sound. They would understand that certain things were about to happen. Either food, I don't know. Like, sound becomes a space for communication. And I, I imagine the story could not leave without this kind of soundscape that would inform certain things about this almost mythological trip, but also could create a space for relation between the audience, the people who visit the exhibition, and myself, so it's a space for conversation.